Uh, so this mod is Vanilla Expanded Trading, and there's some good and some bad here, okay? A couple things uh, I can kind of talk about with Vanilla Expanded Trading. Number one, this is super cool, and this is the contracts menu. And the contract menu means that you can come in here and you can sell this stuff. So when we make this uh, marine armor, I'll show you how it works. Once we make this marine armor and we have it in storage, we're going to change this. It'll This will change and say accept contract and we will accept it. And then in a couple of days, somebody will show up and they're going to pay us $13,450 for it. Um, that $13,450 will actually go into a bank account. Now, if you come down here, you can see the contact, the Imperial Bank or the Bank of Andala. So you come down here and it will go into our bank account. Now, the bank will allow you to do a lot of things. Um, it will allow you to, we could, we could put, uh, we could put money in the bank right now. If we wanted to put our local funds in there, 4348, it'll tell you what those bank fees are. The more friendly you are with the bank, the less the bank fees are. So we would drop those in there. If you wanted a cash loan, uh, we could take loans. We could take a short-term loan, mortgage loan, long-term loan. If you don't pay it back, it angers the faction. They're probably going to come kill you. The other cool thing that you can do with the contracts is that you can actually put a contract out. So any item in the game, you could put a contract out for. So if I wanted a Persona Core, I could come in here and I could say that I want a Persona Core. It will tell you what the base uh, amount that you would have to pay for it is, but you're probably not going to buy a Persona Core for $3,300. As you can see, all of these other markups are in like the 200 to 500% range. So if we really want an NPC faction to fulfill the Persona Core reward, we would probably have to mark it up 300% and we would also uh, have to give it like 45 days, right? Just to have a chance because if you if you put the contract markup too low, the NPCs will not take it. And you can kind of change all of these settings like in, in the actual uh, kind of mod settings itself. So if we wanted a Persona Core, I'd say, listen, I'll mark it up 300%. We'll give it 45 days. We'll pay $10,000 for a Persona Core. Any item in the game that is uh, purchasable or sellable, you will go ahead and find in here. Uh, just whatever whatever it is you need. Uh, and the NPCs will mo most likely fulfill it. Um, that is some of the most fun functionality of the Vanilla Trading Expanded. But the other thing that you can do if you're really interested is there is a stock market. So there are all of these like fake companies. This is all kind of fake-ish, okay? <laughs> of course, I mean, it's a video game, so it's fake. But what I'm saying is... It's basically a, a, a trading simulation where you can buy stocks in these different companies and the stocks will go up and down. So if you're somebody that enjoys something like a trading sim, as long as you have money in the bank, you can buy shares of the affectionate industries of the Broken Dominion. At 343, it'll tell you how many shares. The price will go up or down. And, you know, if you end up making a bunch of money, you know, if you had 10,000 shares of the cohort trader and it went up 1.7, you would make extra money. So it's basically like... So, you know, we're not going to buy share. We don't do child slavery in this stream. Okay. This is a family stream. Um, and uh, you can do that. And then the other cool thing about that is if you're really interested, you can view the news. And all of these over here are the news of those companies that we were just trading. And it will tell you, uh, Meehan on the stream requires a large amount of weapons quite urgently. Prices are going up. So maybe you want to invest in uh, one of those one of those companies that sells weapons. Um, uh, you know, Kama Grassland sells unused Plasteel. Price of Plasteel probably going down, right? Uh, et cetera, et cetera. So if you're really interested in kind of playing it as a trading sim, it, this is super cool. Now, I will say that one of the downsides of Vanilla Trading Expanded is that it also uh, increases or, or uh, reduces the, the cost of things planet-wide based on kind of what you're buying and selling. Meaning, if every time an orbital trader comes to my place and I buy all of their components, the price of components will increase, sometimes prohibitively so. Right, you could imagine a world where if all I'm doing is every trader that comes to my base, I buy components, the price is going to go up a little, up a little, up a little, up a little, up a little. So maybe I started buying those components at like uh, $28 a piece. Well, if all I'm doing is sucking the planet drive components to kind of feed my military industrial complex and all my mechanators, well, guess what? Uh, three or four years from now in game, those components are going to be worth $150 a piece. And now you're like, oh, fuck, I wish I hadn't bought all those components. Conversely, let's say you're running a dr drug manufacturer, and every trader that comes by, you sell them all of your uh, all of your yayo. Well, it's going to start to tank the price of yayo. So it, you know, 
you kind of got to think if you're interested in that type of economical dynamic, I think it's really cool. If all you want to do is run a drug colony and not fuck yourself in price every time you sell Yayo, maybe you don't want vanilla trading on or you want to go in and, and reduce the the amount that the sales are going to impact it, right? Because if you have if you have uh, 15 like 20 by 20 Yayo farms and all you're doing is selling Yayo, a year from now, you're going to get 15 cents for your Yayo every time you sell it versus $11 or whatever it is. So, yeah, it builds in supply and demand. So some people want that in their game. Some people don't want that in their game. We've done some runs that have been very cool. Well, I would say two runs. Uh, and I still want to do this run. So you guys might see this soon. Because what some of you don't know about me is I'm a giant fucking economy nerd. I'm the guy that, that spent like the last three years that he played World of Warcraft at the auction house with like nine different alts like buying and flipping mats and posting them and gold capping like i've i have 100 percent like one of those gold cappers and wow i love this kind of shit uh one of the runs that i really want to do is a trading run where the only way that we can ever make money in the game is by selling things for contract right imagine a run where the only way you can make money is like oh fuck uranium halberds let's go make uranium halberds you know oh fuck we you know uh, 3,000 kibble. Let's go make 3,000 kibble and like, you know, go ahead and fulfill the contract. So you're almost like, um, uh, you know, you're just like, like a, a requisition warehouse. Oh, Silent Jaws for $6,500. Let's go make those, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So I think that would be, um, yeah, you could, yeah, exactly. Zumberge, you're right. You could diversify your drug farms so that you're not, you know, once the price of Yale goes down, you could, you could sell flake or you could sell, you know, anything else, but. All right, this is almost done. Uh, so I'll show you guys how we sell stuff on here and how we're about to make that money. Let somebody put this on. Let somebody try to... Oh, it's also good quality. All right, so let's come down here. We'll go into the contracts. And complete contract. And it'll say the caravan will arrive to pick up the contracted item in three days. Make sure you have enough items when they arrive. The payment will clear once the caravan leaves their area. 